And now we have come to our Dealing with Difficult People Strategies of the Week. And what I would like to do during this section is I'd like to cover three principles that we should all keep in mind when we're dealing with difficult people, especially if you have a pattern of dealing with difficult people at work. If you, for example, do you guys ever watch that show, Parking Wars? It's that reality show. I watch way too much reality TV, but it's a reality show where uh, people work at the impound lot and all of the customers that come to greet them are customers whose cars have recently been impounded or fined or something like that. And they are all angry, difficult customers. I love to watch that show because those people who work behind the desk in an impound lot, for example, are people who are used to dealing with difficult people on a daily basis. All day, these people have a line of difficult people waiting to dump on them at the window every day. And I love to watch that show because while people who work at the window in the impound lot on parking wars don't all necessarily have the ultimate in polished communication skills, they are all very experienced and well-versed in dealing with difficult people. And one of the things that they all have in common is they all incorporate these three principles when they deal with difficult people. So these three principles I would like you to focus on this week when you're dealing with difficult people. Are you ready? The three principles are, number one, don't take the bait. Remember that we are all difficult people. We've all had moments where we're difficult people, right? I have. And when I am in my difficult person mode, when I feel terrible, therefore I want to make those around me feel terrible. Unfortunately, it happens to the best of us. I know that there is a pattern that I can expect. You know, my difficult person inside, it tends to be the steamroller. That's who I am when I'm at my worst in general. And when I start to steamroll over other people, I know how the average person will respond or react to me. Therefore, it's very easy for me to keep going as a steamroller because I'll steamroll over you. You'll give me my expected reaction. I'll keep going. You'll give me another expected reaction. I'll keep going. And I like that. What we want to do when we're dealing with difficult people is not give them the reaction they are expecting. Do not engage. Do not take the bait. You know, we are all kind of like these walking ATM machines where let's say that you're an ATM machine. Okay. Have you ever been to one of those ATM machines where you put your card in and you press all the buttons and it says, I'm about to give you your money and it doesn't give you any money. Like you can hear the thing going and you wait, but no money comes out or even worse, it eats your card. Has that ever happened to you? If it has, I bet you have never been back to that ATM machine, right? We are all kind of like walking ATM machines where difficult people will come up and they'll push our buttons and then the difficult people will stand back and wait for a payout. And what happens is so often we get caught up in the cycle of giving them the payout, whether it's an angry reaction that they're looking for, whether it's engaging with them, whether it's uh, fighting with them, whatever it may be, what we tend to do is we give them the reaction they're waiting for. We give them the payout, so to speak, so they keep coming back to our ATM machine. But again, if you've ever been to one of those ATM machines that did not give you your money, chances are you did not go back to that machine. Be that ATM for other difficult people. Do not give them the payout they are expecting, and that will decrease the odds of them coming back to you. So remember, difficult people are, you know, fishermen and they're throwing their line, waiting for you to take the bait, don't take the bait. Because principle number two that I'd like you to keep in mind this week is what gets rewarded gets repeated. Again, I watch too much reality television, and I love to watch that Nanny 911 show. You ever watch that? Or the Super Nanny, Nanny Joe. And one of the ways that nannies frequently, the successful nannies, will teach us to train our children is by reinforcing positive things, positive reinforcement. What gets rewarded gets repeated. That's basic human behavior. And I know that we've talked about this in our lessons previously, but again, this week, I'd like you to focus on these three principles. Number one, don't take the bait. Number two, what gets rewarded gets repeated. So remember, if you are going to reward difficult people after taking the bait, 
expect that behavior to be repeated with you. Punishing is not the way to go. Nanny Joe will tell you it's not about punishing children. And the same strategies that we use to train children frequently work when we, train, when we train those around us how to treat us. Because remember, and we've said this before during these lessons, we train people how to treat us. We are training the entire world how to treat us. And one of the ways we train people is we reward their behavior. Unfortunately, many times we are unwittingly rewarding behavior that we wish would not be repeated, but we reward it anyway by giving the person what they want. Therefore, what gets rewarded gets repeated. You want difficult behavior to stop, stop rewarding it. And again, sometimes we have uh, unique instances of difficult people where this particular principle will not apply. But generally speaking, what we first want to do is cover the patterns in our lives. We want to first address those. And generally when we reflect on the difficult people in our lives, the difficult situations, the things that bother us about other people, we will notice a pattern. And so start with those patterns that you notice in your life and recognize the rewards that you're giving to encourage these patterns and stop giving it. And remember principle number three, use the broken record. Many times when we are dealing with difficult people, we might say something to them such as, I don't allow profanity at work or at home. Or we might give them a, can you just give me a chance phrase? If you can just give me a chance, I believe I can help you with this. Whatever phrases you're tactically using with difficult people, chances are they're going to keep going and they're going to test you a little bit. Don't start changing your words or your strategies or your tactics simply because you're being pushed a little bit. It's just like when kids ask us for something and we say no, and they say why, and we give them an answer. They'll, they'll say but, and they'll counter that answer, and then we'll give them another answer. They'll counter that. We'll give them another. They'll counter that. And it goes on and on and on because kids know. They might not know it, you know, uh, they might not be able to articulate it, but they know that if I can get you to use different words, you know, if I can get you to change your story, I got you on the run. And there's a chance that I might get what I'm looking for. And the truth, or the, the same is true for difficult people. You know, if they notice that we are using new phrases, coming up with new excuses, new verbal patterns, new words, instead of sticking to our message, they will think I still have a chance with this person to get them to behave the way I want them to, and their difficult behavior will continue. The powerful communicator chooses their message and stays on message. Remember that the broken record, what that helps us do is stay on message because, because that sends a signal. You can yell and scream and, and behave however you want. It's not going to get you anywhere with me because I know better. I am trained. I am at a different level of communication. I've dealt with this before. This is not my first rodeo. You know, for example, at the uh, the parking wars window, you know, a customer might come up and say, that's not fair. I shouldn't have had my car towed. I was parked legally. And the person might say, well, your choices are you can pay the $150 now or you can come back later, but you're going to have to pay an additional $25 fee per day. Well, that's not fair. Da, 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 da. I'm really mad. I'm going to get a lawyer. And watch how they'll, be, they'll say things such as, well, that might be, but your choices are you can pay the $150 now or you can come back later, but there's going to be a $25 additional fee per day. Well, you guys, is a bunch of highway robbery. That's not fair. I don't know. Well, that may be, but your choices are really this. You can pay the $150 fee now or you can pay $25 each additional day. And they'll keep repeating themselves nearly word for word because they know if they were to say something such as, well, we wouldn't have towed your car if it wasn't parked illegally and actually responded to the difficult person and engaged with them. It's all over because then the difficult person knows I've hooked you. You have now taken the bait. You're engaging with me. I've got you on the run. So remember principle number three, use the broken record. When you choose your strategy, stick to it. Keep repeating your words. It's more powerful and it's much easier for you because you don't have to start thinking of new words all the time. And now we have come to our principle of the week. Communication principle of the week. This is one of my favorite principles. So I'm going to give it to you as your special gift during lesson 10. And it is, 
your safety lives where you do not defend. We, these free effective, effective communication skills training course videos brought to you by communication, communication expert, expert keynote speaker, Dan O'Connor. O'Connor.